one thing is that you learn and that you know Jesus Christ. If that's happening, how it happened, I can tell that. Amen? I'm not traditional at all. That's why I preach like this. <laughs> so if a whole lot of people don't agree with the way I do things, guess what?
So we have to continue it. I heard the, uh, in the in the little skit talking about having a little talk with Jesus. You know, and, and sometimes y'all don't you don't have to be like you don't have to be a prayer warrior. You don't. You don't have to be a prayer warrior to get his attention. You know, and I know they they'll tell you a whole lot of stuff. Oh, you gotta learn how to do this, you gotta learn. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you are his child, he hears you. He will hear you. Now he may not respond to me what you want him to. But he hears you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I want us to look at something. And I have dealt with this before. But I want to do this, I want to deal with this today. Y'all know I don't mind repeating myself. Because I feel like somebody needs to hear this. It is found in the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter. I want us to look at the 34th verse. Matthew 13 and 34. Amen. And it says this. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them. Amen. Do everyone see that? All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable spake he not. So it's basically saying that Jesus spoke to all, spoke all these things to the people in parables. And if he didn't use a parable, he didn't speak. Amen. 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 So interesting that he that it, it, it uses this thing, a parable, a story. Jesus would come out and he would start telling these stories. He would tell these stories that had these meanings behind it. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? So to really to get a word from the Lord, you have to really be listening. You know, this is not like a lot of times like we think of a prophet who comes to you and say, the Lord told me to tell you Go here or go there or do this or do that. It don't take much listening for that. But with Jesus, you have to be listening. Because Jesus will start coming out there and start talking about trees. He'll be talking about, you know, a soul going to sow seeds. You know, you look, you got that, you come to Jesus like, okay, I'm going through right now. Lord, I need my word, Lord, I need my word. Jesus, I'm here. And Jesus saw her. A man had four wagons. <laughs> Jesus, what a wagon got to do with me? <laughs> it sounds crazy. It does. It sounds crazy. Jesus was there. But see, they didn't know how he was supposed to come anyway. <laughs> what do you think about it? Who knew how he was supposed to come? But they had assumed in their head it's supposed to work out like this. And this is how a lot of times we are. And this is what gets us in trouble with the Lord. If we start saying, okay, it's going to work out this way. And it doesn't. Right? Y'all dealt with that? And you frustrated and mad at God, everybody, and blaming everybody else. Because things are not working the way you thought they would. But you know what? He never said it would. He's going to do it his way. Anyway. You understand what I'm saying? Because he knows how and what needs to be done. We don't. I learned that the hard way. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. I learned it the hard way. Well, you know what? You don't learn it, but... 
That's how a lot of crime and disappointment and frustration and accusations and everything. Jesus came out. And I want us to understand it. It says all these things spoke he in parable. And without parable, oh, he didn't say nothing. And I say this is important because Jesus had been prophesied for a hundred of years. People have been talking about Jesus, this Messiah, is going to come. When Jesus comes, this is going to happen and that is going to happen. All of their fathers and their forefathers and their grandmothers and great-grandmothers and everybody who spoke about him was saying, when he comes, just wait, you're going to learn this and you're going to learn that. If you remember the woman at the well, she even told him. She was like, yeah, we heard that when the Messiah comes, he's going to teach us all things. Everybody had been told about this kind of stuff. And Jesus shows up, and he's telling stories. <laughs> he's telling stories. Like I said, one thing I learned about that means you have to listen to him. Not on the surface level. You might be listening because there's a lot of people who heard the parable and didn't get them. Yeah. Jesus will start telling the parable and they will not be the better life. What does that mean? You know, they sow or sow seed, so what? They didn't get it. It's a lot of time the Lord is talking to us. And you know what? We're just like them. Don't get it. Because what he's saying to us don't make sense to us or don't, just a lot of times it don't tie into what we want to do or what we <coughs> think should be done or whatever at that moment. I'm going to back up a moment and I want to say this because I, I think I dealt with this on a Wednesday night. Remember this about the Lord. He's going to always deal with the core of the problem. He's not going to deal with the surface of it. Like a lot of times what we, how we see it. And what I'm saying is just say for instance, uh, a lot of times even when we see something in somebody's life that we call sin a lot of times we don't know where that comes from and it could be much deeper than we know and the Lord will deal with it from the root see we'll be dealing with it from the surface but he's going to deal with it from the root of the problem there is a reason that triggers all these things to what you now see. So he's going to always deal with things at the root of it. And that's what we don't understand about it. We be like, Lord, you know, I need you to fix just say my finances. So what we want him to do, just go poof, and money just start falling down, right? Guess what? That's not the problem. You see what I'm saying? That's not the problem. The problem is not that you don't have enough. The problem can even be going way further back before the end. It could be going back to even to the point to where you felt like you was neglected and never got the things you wanted. So now it's got you on this spending craze. I'm being honest with you. A lot of times we don't even realize how things are treated like that. The scripture says all these things, and I want to summarize this. Verse 13. Was 
sprung up and brought forth fruit. Then appeared the cares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From which, which, which had it cares? He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reaper, Gather ye together first the ten and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat in my barn. Do everyone see that? Amen. He gave this little story. And notice the first thing he said was this. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto this. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see that? The kingdom of heaven is likened unto this. Or the kingdom of heaven is like this. I want us to really understand this. Because a lot of times when people think about the kingdom of heaven, they think about the castle and the buildings and all of that stuff, right? They think about how beautiful it is and all this kind of stuff. He's not talking about any structures at all. He says the kingdom of heaven, which what he said is, this is how it functions. So in the kingdom of heaven, you got enemies. So this is not heaven. <laughs> this is the kingdom of heaven. Do everybody understand that? Yeah. Do you understand that in the kingdom of heaven, there are going to be some folks who don't like you? Yeah. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, just get over it. Yeah. Everybody is not going to be your friend yeah. in the kingdom of hell. Yeah. All right? <laughs> I'm being honest with you. Because look, see, the kingdom, you have to understand it. This is why I want us to look at it. The kingdom is not talking about the castle and all of the nice buildings and stuff. It is talking about the territory that the king controls. That's right. That's right. Y'all follow me? So it could be a rural, flat, wooded area. If it's inside of the territory, that's the kingdom, even though it's in the wilderness. So a lot of times, even though we're going through our wilderness journey, it don't mean we left the kingdom. That's right. That's right. Y'all got me. That's right. Sometimes he's taking us through swamp lands and where are all kinds of dangers and unseen and seen, and we still in the kingdom. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You have to remember. God created the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Right? And in that very garden, you had trees you should eat from. And there was a tree you don't eat from. Yeah. In the paradise place. Yes. <laughs> where God created. Do everybody understand me? Why am I saying this? Let me tell you something. I don't care how close you are with the Lord. You will not ever be not in the midst of trouble or That's problem right. or enemies or whatever. That's right. You know what? He just teach you how to handle that. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So guess what? Haters gonna be there. <laughs> you know what I'm just being honest with you. Tell your neighbor, say your haters gonna be there. Look, look, hey, get over it. Get over it. Learn how to deal with them, because they gonna be there. <laughs> Do you know Jesus shows 12 
disciples, and among the twelve, guess what? He had a Judas. Right. Yes, sir. Who traveled with him all the time, who was right there eating from the same, you know, food and drinking from the same, who was helping him do all this different stuff and was trying to get him the whole time. That's right. <laughs> Judas is going to be there. Y'all know that? Yes. Do you know you're going to have some Judases in your life? Yes. That look, don't be sitting up there just hating them the whole time. Now you got to feel like every time those Judases show up, I'm going to just rip right in. But no, they there for a reason. They there for a reason. They there for a reason. Tell your neighbor, say, get over it. Yeah. All right, watch this. Watch this. <laughs> now watch this, y'all. Watch it. Look, okay, so he said the kingdom of heaven, this is how it is, or this is how it functions. So if you listen, if you got that kind of stuff going on in your life, you operate in the kingdom of heaven. Woo. Or you're like operating and like an unto it. Look, you ought to thank the Lord right there. You know what I'm saying? Look, you all you thought that was the end. That was good. He just got a little part of his hill. But you know what the Lord did? He doing something. Tell your neighbor, say he doing something. Tell him, say he doing something. Okay, now listen. He said, now listen, he said, now he planted good seed. And while men slept, and I want us to really understand it. He said, while men slept, and it, you know, because you have to be careful when you read some of this stuff. Sometimes slept to me, dead, you know, slept to me. But, but, and, but what this is really more referring to is why they were not conscious of what was going on. Yeah. Everybody understand me. What he said is, while they were not conscious of what was going on, the enemy came in. Yes. Uh, yes. Amen. Yes, amen. I want to help y'all, and I'm telling y'all, because mm -hmm. even in the church, we've been sleeping a long time. That's right. It's a whole lot of us been sleeping a very, very long time. Yeah. In fact, I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and I was talking about. You know how. Uh, in fact, we, we they had called me about. Did y'all see this? I didn't see it. Everything they got this show on now about these preachers. Y'all saw it. Y'all saw it. I didn't have eyes to see it. Yet. I got phone calls. That phone was blowing up. Now have you seen this? Have you seen this? And I said, No, nah, and I don't plan to. I told them, I said, I'm not. I'm bringing up that shit at all. But. Um, but my, my whole point is, and I said, and, and so they were telling me how bad it was or whatever, and I said, you know what? I said, as bad as it may seem, it's really good. Because we've been asleep. And we the people have not been aware that this been going on the whole time. This is, look, it's time that it's no longer. And if they have to put it on TV, so what? I have no problem with it. I have no problem with it. And like I told them, I said, we got too many fans of this church who have not been Christians or have not been followers of Jesus. We got too many church fans that go to church every Sunday and just all they enjoy this stuff and they just entertain by this stuff. And that's what they just follow. Fans don't see what's really been going That's on. That's right. Yeah. They don't see what's really been going on. Yeah. Yeah. And so, see, we may y'all tell you that it's time for us to wake up. Yeah. It's time for us to wake up. Yeah. Listen, all these here people getting up and showing off their gifts and talents and whatever, wake up. Wake up. Yeah. This is not it. That's not it. That's not it. It's not about that. Yes. It's not about who got the nicest cars and yes. who got the best suits and the biggest shirts. Wake up! Yes. Yes. 
say love for? That's oh, right. Oh, we been sweet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And while we been sleep, you know what? The enemy came in That's right. to take what God had put in for good. That's right. And he stopped putting tears in. Tears in. Things with thorns, thistles. It should have been good for you. It's tearing you up. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> That's why the voice rate is so high. That what should have been good is now got tears in. And now people are rejecting marriage because they say it ain't no good. No, we not good. Just tell the truth. It wasn't it. It was us. They don't like me, but I don't care. I don't care. You know what? Because I said this to them. I said, y'all, because if y'all, I don't know if y'all know, but we, the church has been in this 20-year period where 20 years ago is where all of this stuff started. But, you know, old people was in comfort. You remember when y'all know when the conference was real hot? And every time you turn on the TV, everybody had a comfort. They were showing off. Y'all know that? They were having conferences on cruise ships and all. Everywhere you could think about it. It was conferencing, 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 conferencing. You had all this stuff going on and everything. And blessed and prosperity and all this kind of stuff. And a whole lot of us didn't get no more money. Even a whole lot of fans that was following all that crap. And I said to them, I said, I want you, I said, you think about this. If you had to look at that 20 year period, and see where the people were then and where they are now. What good did all of that do? That's right. What good did it do? It did nothing. They came, many of them came and said they had a new beginning. Not in a positive way. Some of them do have a new beginning, but they lost more by following it than they yes. would have not followed. So guess what? I'm glad it's coming out. That's right. Amen. Amen. I, I'm not all right. Let me move on. Let me move on. But while men slept, his enemy came yeah. and sold tares among the wheat and went his way. Amen. So the enemy comes, y'all, and sowed tares among the wheat, and then went on his way. Okay, let me just stop right there for a minute, because I'm going to help somebody. And just keep us from being stagnant. Don't take your enemy's words against you, personally. That's what they do. Yeah. You know what? Haters hate. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. So they'll come to your life yeah. and then they're going to hate on you and then he's going to go his way. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going with you and I'm going to hate on you and I'm going his way. And you'll be sitting there taking it personal yeah. and he right. moved on. Y'all right. understand what I'm saying? It's a whole lot of folks, y'all, in these negative situations in our life. And we'll be saying, I can't believe they did that to me. You just won. Yeah. 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 That's what they do. Yeah. Do you know liars lie? Yeah. They don't just lie on you. That's right. They just lie. Look, some of them have what I call a spirit of life. They just be walking down the streets. Just having la 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 la. And I think they're so jealous about it. Love it. They're so alive. Y'all know. 
person give. They don't just do it to us. It ain't just one person they do it to. A giving person give. A listener listen. Talkers talk. You know. <laughs> Of, 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 uh, 
of, 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 of spiritual warfare and all this kind of stuff. You know, we just start warming up as soon as we see the devil. I'm ready. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't, 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 don't reveal who you are. Don't reveal who you are. But you know, some of us think, you know, as soon as we see the enemy, you know, I'm going to just, I got this hip repair for me. I, look, I got my oil and I got, I got rags and I got flowers with this on it and all this kind of stuff. And the Lord said, no. Amen. Be good. Now, look, I'm not, I'm not saying this to pick on you. I'm saying this for you something that you got to understand how God works. See, sometimes the Lord let just say the good seed and the bad grow up together for a reason. I'm not saying this now. Have y'all ever been in a situation and you felt like the Lord was? He wasn't hearing you at all. It was just like, look, the enemy is paying you out. And you're like, Lord, do you care? I cannot even, I'm not about to hang on. I don't know how much longer I can hang on. I'm about ready to give up. I'm about ready to go back. All that kind of stuff, and the Lord is not moving at all. Yeah. He letting you grow together. That's right. He said, it's going to be a time I'm going to separate. But you know what? He know how to put a fake on your behind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sometimes you know how to let the enemy catch some of us up so that we don't ever forget that you're That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. That's why, that's why I kept him. Yes, sir. I'm telling you. That's why I kept him. I just want to try to cast off everything. Some things you need to know that's the Lord doing. That's right. Because if that's his doing, you can't cast it off more. That's right. You know what? He's going to do what his work anyway. That's why he told Peter. When he said, Peter, Satan desires to have you, that he might sift you as we. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. He didn't say, Peter, I I find that rapture in the name by name, and he won't get no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Who say none of that? That's right. He said, Peter, when he gets through shaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. He said, I'm, I'm praying that your faith yeah. be still intact. He said, but well, I'm going to let him shake you. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to let him put it on you, Peter. Yeah. Because you need it. Yes, and how many of y'all know some of us? We need it a whole
Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? So let me tell y'all something. See, when you're going through, you got to be careful who you running to. Yeah. Because I don't care what power serve. That's right. They say they are. That's right. Let me tell you, the only one who knew what was happening in the household. Yeah, that's right. And see, one thing, too, about being a disciple of Christ and being a worker of the Lord and all this kind of stuff, you go, you move from servant status yeah. to a friend. Hallelujah. And everybody don't get the friend just because they say it. Jesus said to them, I call you no more servant. I call you friend. But a servant don't know everything of the master. But the friend, he does. And why am I saying that? That's why, well, like I, I told you, I think a couple of weeks ago, that's why, you know, like well, sometimes you be going through your life and you have you go to these people and you tell them, oh, and I'm just going to and I, I need some prayer, and la, 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 la. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and they be going there, and I'm like, hey, my Jesus, la, 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 la. And they be spitting in your face and all that kind of stuff. Hi. And everything. <laughs> and nothing don't change. Yeah. That's because the servant don't know. Yeah. What's going on? Yes, sir. Let me tell you, sometimes, sometimes the Lord is doing that on purpose. <laughs> and if they, if they beyond service have, they'll be, they'll be destroyed. You know what? You're going to be all right in the name of Jesus. <laughs> because, you, you know what? Because whatever he's doing, all that yes. work together yes. for the good. To yes. them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. I don't care how bad it looks. A slip, the, the, the one who's a part of the household knows that's a part of all things. Yes, sir. And sometimes even when he has to tag you up, you go, how you going to be fine? Whatever I can do to help you through it, you're going to be fine. Yeah. But you know what? That's the Lord yeah. doing that thing in your life. How many y'all know the thing? Okay, so the servant didn't you know the man did. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this up. But he says this. He says, he says this to them. He says, they say, do you want us to go out there and separate it or get rid of the tears? And he said, no, let them go together. He said, because if you go, he said, you might, uh, he said, you might uproot the wheat with it. He said, let both grow together. Till the heart. You everybody see that? He said, let them grow together. Till the heart. Everybody there? Yeah. <laughs> he said, let them grow together. Till the heart. He's talking about the harvest time. Yeah. Or the harvest yeah. season. Yeah. So he said, listen, don't bother with them. He said, there's going to be a time to bother, to, to, to do that. Uh -huh. But you got to let them go through their full development. Uh -huh. Yes. Look, even though the care is right there with them, yeah. the care can't destroy them. Yes. Leave them alone. He said, you will do more damage to the fruit yes. of this uh, then the care will leave them there. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm saying. You know what? That's why sometimes the Lord has to leave us in hot spots yeah. for a period of time. Because you know it's a part of our development. Y'all yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a part of him developing us into what he wants us to be. Yeah. And like I said, sometimes it'll feel like God hates you. Yeah. It'll be like you've been forsaken. It'll be like you been look like you under a curse. Y'all yeah. feel like that. You think I'm under a curse. You like, no, you know. You just feel the tears, man. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I've said this before and I'll say it again. Like I said, y'all think about this. When the children of Israel left Egypt, and you know they had ran down there and got caught up between the two mountains in the in the uh, Red Sea. And it was time for them to cross over. And they weren't going to do it because they had been murmuring the whole time. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, they had every, every time things didn't go their way, they say, I should have saved yeah. back in Egypt. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, some of us, a whole lot of stuff we was ready to run back to when things got rough. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Destroying our lives and all that kind of stuff. There's a whole lot of us, every time things get rough, we go, I should have just stayed where I was. And God would say, no, I'm moving before. Yes. And we would say, oh, I should just never try this and never did this and never push for it. Never, yeah. never, never. So you know what he did? He took the enemy and he put him on that trail. God did that. While they was in a corner, couldn't get out, God said, go run. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I'm going to open up the water. You run them across it. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. he have to use some of those tears in our lives yes, to push us forward into where he wants us to be. Because other than that, we wouldn't do it. Yes, y'all know what I'm saying? Do y'all know that it's a whole lot of us, the reason why we where we are now, he had to use some tears in our yeah. life yeah. to make us move forward. Yes. <laughs> some of it been some hardships, some of it been some real bad stuff, some of it been some stuff we can't even tell people about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too embarrassing. Yes, sir. Anyway, anyway, I'm gonna finish up. I'm gonna finish up. I'm gonna finish up. So he said to the servant, he said to them, he said, let them go together. And notice he says this, and I love that, but he, he, he calls all these type of titles out for a reason. You got the servants, the householder, and then you got, yeah, you got the enemy, and then now you got down here, you got, he say, in verse 30, he said, let's both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So you got all these people with different titles. Do y'all know everybody here got a title? Mm -hmm. Yours may not be a minister, but you got a title. Mm -hmm. And your title is what you do. Amen? Mm -hmm. We don't all do the same thing, but you do something. Yeah. You know that? And you know what? It's a reason we don't all do the same thing. And it's a good reason. Stop worrying about you don't because you don't do something somebody else do. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's not what you do. And what they do is no better than what you do. That's right. The most important gift is the gift that's needed. That's right. You can be the best singer in this place yes. to the plumbing back up. That's right. <laughs> and then we need the plumbing. Yeah. Because your singing ain't going to help. Y'all follow what I'm saying? The most important gift is the gift that's needed. God has placed in you a gift and a title that you got a title for. That's right, yeah. The question is, do you know it? <laughs> because see, at a point in time, he's going to call for appointed people. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. And your time might be coming up when he's getting ready to call for you and you don't know who you are. Yes. And the beauty of this whole parable is he don't let nobody do what you do. Yeah. He told them that's not what you do. Yeah. They said, do you want us to go out there? He said, no. Be with them. Yes. He said, when the ones who are appointed to do it show up, yes. I'll tell them yeah, yeah, yeah. to do it. Yeah. Because you know what? They know how to do it.
Because we are reaching a time where it's hard to serve. Yes. And it's time for God to call for people. The question is, do you know who you are? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. He's calling for people, and you need to know who you are. You need to know what you do. And you need to be perfecting your skill. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm telling one night, they ask, I'm, I'm with I'm that Bible study, you know. See, now if you people go, like, if you want to be so willing, let me tell you something. You can't be rough and be so willing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. You can't. They're fragile. They're fragile. You have to deal with them a certain way. You got broken dreams and broken hearts. You got broken promises. You got lives that have been broken. They're damaged. Amen. Those that will gather those are people who are skilled in dealing with self-expression. I said it before and I said it again, you know. Like I said, when I was growing up, I used to pick fruit and I knew. I knew about it. And when you go out there and you pick oranges, you had some oranges that was picked for, they took them to the stores and for the plant and they made orange juice out of it. To pick those oranges, you can just go up in the tree, pull them off and drop them on the ground. Pick them up and put them in buckets or whatever and pour them over in a big bin and they would take the big bin and pour it over in the big trailer and when it get to the plant, they would take the trailer and back it up and pour it over on these conveyor belts and that's how you could do yeah. the ones that were for juice. But the ones that was going to be used to like bag up and the people were eat them, you could handle them like that. When you pull them off the tree, you have to put them straight in the bag. Yes. When you put them in, a, or in, a, in a, from your bag, you put them in these big bins. You put them in a, a box that was going to be picked up and placed on the truck. Yes. And when it got to the uh, plant, they had to pick that box up and place it, so you had to handle it totally different. Yes. So you had to know how to handle different orders. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. But like I said, especially with a tangerine. Yes, sir. A tangerine has real soft healing or skin, whatever you want to call it. And so every time you get ready to pluck a tangerine, you have to make sure you yeah. twist it first. Mm -hmm. Which break the steel. So you didn't pull the top of it off. Because who wanted to eat a tangerine that's been open? Yes, sir. And if you didn't have those skills to do it, you weren't going to make no money. So you have to know how to pick lettuce and to pick a, a potato and all these things. You have to learn how to do it so you don't damage the plant yeah. for the next year. So to be a reaper, you have to be skilled in that yeah. thing. Y'all yeah. understand what I'm saying? See, there's a whole lot of us. We try to do everything for God. Yeah. 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 We want to be prophet, priest, yeah. cook, you know, hey,
thought about, you know, emotions. It's about your own. This is what you need to know from this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. God is not the father of the world. God has placed in you a gift and a talent. He really has. Yeah. My question to you is, do you know what you do? Yes. Stop concentrating on what, on what everybody else do. That's right. What everybody else do is not important. Not to you. The question is, do you know what you do? Yes. Because you know what? He's going to require of you what he gave you. The one he gave ten talents, the one he gave five, the one he gave one. He's going to require what he gave you of you. Do everybody understand that? My question to you again is, do you know what you do? That's right. Amen. It may not be, like I said, y'all, Something we do on Sunday morning, that's fine. You know what? The Lord said he's making room for those people too. And they're just as important. Some of us may be missionaries. Some of us may be, you know, people who do things that we might not do on Sunday morning. You know what? We want to encourage and help you get there too. Because that's needed. Just as much. Do y'all realize that? That's right. The Lord wants you to know. You need to know who you are and what you do. That's right. And you need to stop operating in that. Amen. Because you know what? The time is now. Let me tell y'all this. Many people have had their reign, but they're wrong. Yes. And one thing that's beautiful about God is God gives things a certain amount of time. And when that time is up, and He comes back and He requires that's right. of us of that period of time. And if you don't do nothing with it, yes. He will take it from you. Right. And He will give it to somebody else. My whole point is, I'm not saying this to bring you. I'm saying this, y'all. There's a whole lot of people getting ready to lose their clock. Right. But they haven't done nothing with you. It. And you might be next in line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you today, you need to know what you do. You need to uh, sharpen your skill and be ready for what God got for you. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm telling you. I'm being honest. You need to know that. And don't think you won't use a little old somebody like you. You don't need a whole lot of gifts and talents on that. You need some true heart. Amen. Amen. Grab the hand of the person next to you.